Hello everybody. Welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Uh, today I'll be doing a watercolor wash over a pen and ink study I did of a Herman Herzog painting. Um, I have another video uploaded where I did this. Um, this one's kind of just a different sketching approach and whatnot, but I'll get to that in a moment. So, materials. This is Canson 100% cotton. 9 by 12. I taped it off so that the outside edge of the tape is 8 by 10. So it would fit underneath an 8 by 10 mat with a white border showing just to kind of make it nice and crisp. Um, the painting itself is a Herman Herzog painting. Um, he was an American painter from Germany, uh, 1800s, early 1900s, American. Uh, amazing painter, check him out. This painting that this was sketched of, this was Twilight Over a Lake. I used a um, fountain pen revolution Himalaya fountain pen. This was filled with platinum carbon ink, which is waterproof and light fast. And yeah, I think that's all the materials. This, um, I don't think the sketch really came out as good as the, the other one, the other study. I kind of did a different approach with different type of cross hatching within the sky to experiment with clouds. And the previous one, I just did horizontal strokes just to um, build up different tonal values. And here, as you can see, there's a different in approach. So, I'll be taking a squirrel mop. Oh, we got Percy. Let me see if I can get Percy on camera. Percy! Now, Percy is a kitten, but at this point, she's like a young adult. And there she is. Percy, you gotta look up. No? Alright, well, there you go. So, that's Percy. And she's adorable. Okay. So... This painting is a lot grayer than the previous one. So I'll use burnt sienna and ultramarine to make a nice watery neutral. Sorry, I kind of spaced out there for a second. And this area I want to keep white and right in here white as well so as I kind of just paint this in I'll blab a little bit um, I've been experimenting with different style videos you know for instance this one um, I had pre-sketched and then now it's just kind of the washing in. Um, in other videos I've done start to finish um, and yet more I'll pause whenever I'm drying and whatnot. So I'm just trying different things um, to see what you guys like or to keep the channel fresh. And like I said, this is just a mixture of the ultramarine and raw sienna. It seems to kind of gradiate into a, sorry, burnt sienna, into a raw sienna. So let's grab some of that. And unfortunately in these videos, I have to apologize for apologizing because you know sometimes the biggest art critic is you know yourself is you personally and um, I love doing these master studies these sketches there's so much you can learn by sitting there staring and sketching a master painting I highly recommend doing it and you know obviously it's not going to come out like the painting, the original, especially if it's only, um, you know, the sketch was only done in about 40 minutes 
as to an oil, oil painting that probably took you know days or months but um you know so so i just apologize if um i seem apologetic oh percy i need you not to climb up here <laughs> percy please <laughs> That that was a first. She was hopping up and saying, stop apologizing and paint. Here's some lemon yellow, which I'm gonna put in and then I'm gonna push it towards more of a green. So it'll probably go in a little fresher than I'll intend it to be. And we'll see from there. Also, it has these um, these elk that I was very happy with how well they kind of sketched. However, I learned that I should not have um, brought the area around them so close. Next time, I'll probably leave a crisp outline around them for sketches. Not a crisp outline, a crisp uh, white paper around it. But, you know, that's how you learn. Okay, I want a little bit darker, so I'm gonna grab burnt umber and ultramarine. I struggled sketching this area, this little um, landmass, heading into the painting. Um, it was quite dark the area a lot darker than I'm putting it in now um, there's a lot of little subtleties so that was um, a challenge but a fun challenge is you know working with just the pen and ink makes you you know question how would you go about doing that and that kind of goes back to having like a limited palette you're working with what you have Here's some light red oxide mixed with the ultramarine. A little bit different. These mountains in the background, light red oxide, ultramarine. And I'll take a play from James Fletcher Watson by simply adding a little bit of burnt sienna to that to warm it up for the closer landmass. Let's get back into the clouds. I'm going to cheat and grab some Payne's Gray. Now, there is variations in the original painting. So to get those variations, let's see if I can utilize the paper towel for a textured lighting effect, like lighting, lifting in those spots to lighten it up. A light red. The colors that he has in the sky right here makes me wonder if he used cadmium colors. Another 
paper towel. Let's see if I can do a little bit of cheating. Using that to soften edges into the texturized spots. A little bit stronger light red oxide. I think I need to mix it with yellow. Maybe that'll give like the illusion of a kind of cad color. Cadmium uh, red, cadmium orange. Now, Hermann Herzog was uh, you know, a German school realist, uh, painted in America. Um, one of my favorite painters to, to study. In the comments below, who are your favorite painters? Who would you recommend studying? Who do you like to study? It's even lighter than that, the reflections of these lights in the water. That's one thing that I hope to gain from these studies is access to the, um, the subtlety that these masters had. I like fast and loose. I like the moody. Um, but I want to try to add that to my you know, bag of tricks. Yeah, I put that lemon yellowish mix down in here. Let's, um, something I really didn't think of was how I was going to color these guys in. I'll just grab some burnt sienna, and there we go. The Chinese school of painting, and if you look up uh, Henry Lee, he has a lot of um, videos on YouTube. Um, Blue Heron Arts is his website and his company. He do does a lot of you know Chinese painting, and a lot of Chinese painting is revolves around um, a brush application of ink, and then an application of color on top of that. And even some of the paper is so thin, you can apply your um, color to the back of the paper and it actually shows through. It's a really beautiful effect. But um, he's somebody that I would recommend looking into for kind of pen and ink stuff. I'm not really well versed in who's out there in that field. I'd say Alan Owen has some out of that. This is ultramarine and light red oxide. I want to get a little bit more variation in that sky. Alan Owen um, has a lot of uh, fast and loose videos, but I believe he has pen and ink wash as well. Uh, Lois Davidson might have some of that as well. I'm going to have to look and check. Who else? Yeah, just to give you guys ideas, um, as much as I want you guys to like and subscribe and all that on this channel, I also want to um, you know suggest other people and help you guys expand. Or it, who's your favorite YouTuber that you watch that does pen and ink and washes over it? That'd be a good comment down below. And we could check people out. And then I could refer to them.
Sometimes it helps for me to stand up and then look through the camera, see how things are looking. I think what I need to do I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna grab this grayish wash, ultramarine and most likely burnt sienna. And I think what might help is doing kind of a unifying wash all the way throughout. This may be a good idea, this may be a bad idea. It might give a feel to this whole twilight of the scene, because it's twilight over a lake. Let's see if that'll give us that uniformity. And that'll fill in the unnecessary highlights that I inadvertently left in spots. Let's see, I think that was for the better. Yeah, I think that helped out. Okay, let's lift up a little bit on these guys so that they pop a little bit more. I'm gonna pause for a second to do a dry off and we'll take a look and we'll see if it's necessary to um, continue with washes or if we probably hit a point where not much would happen. And before that, let me model this cloud a little bit more just so that it's there before I do a dry off just in case we decide not to do anything else. Okay, I'm going to pause and dry off. All right, I'm pretty happy with it after that dry off. Um, let's remove this tape. I will try to keep my hand out the way so that you guys get the viewing pleasure of those crisp edges. Remember, pull away from the picture. Pull away. This one's pretty hard since my hand has to go over it. So I'll pull away. Hopefully that's looking good. Then we'll sign it. Uh, and we'll put a mat over it just to take a look. And there you go. All right, that was satisfying. Okay, so as per usual, if I'm doing a master study, just in case this winds up anybody else's hands, um, I label it after, and then I put the artist's name. So this is after Herman Herzog. And then in quote quotation marks underneath it, I'll um, put the title of the piece. This is Twilight Over a Lake.
And if I knew the date, let's see. Some of the paintings, um, you know, if they're kind of obscure and all that, there's not much information out there sometimes. This one, it has the original dimensions, dates unknown. Original dimensions is uh, 14 inches by 22 inches. That is pretty cool. Okay, we'll move the clips. Get all these papers out of the way. Using that. And there you go. All right, hope you enjoyed. Once again, please like, subscribe, follow. Uh, let me know down below what you would like to see content-wise. Um, and I will talk to you all soon. Have a great day. Bye.